In the desert, 30 miles north of Tucson, lies a structure that is arguably both an architectural, engineering, and biological masterpiece. But its history, its building, its operation has been as multi-layered, as complex and troubling as the story of humankind itself, because Biosphere 2 is a man and woman made mini world. It consists of seven miniaturized biomes, where biome means a community of plants and animals distinctive to a region. Altogether, these biomes cover a footprint area of 3.15 acres, or about three football fields. The wild biomes of Biosphere 2 include a 20,000 square foot tropical rainforest, a million gallon ocean, a grassland and thorn scrub savanna, a mangrove marsh, and a 15,000 square foot desert. The domestic biomes include a 24,000 foot intensive agricultural biome. Intensive in the sense of maximized yearly food production per unit area of soil. And a habitat for eight humans. And for farmyard animals, goats, chickens, and pigs. Below the various biomes lies an extensive so-called technosphere of tanks and pipes and wind machines and motherboards in symbiosis with the organic life forces of the biomes, so that together and guided by the human inhabitants who practice adaptive management, they make her go. Biosphere 2 is like an aircraft carrier with a garden of Eden on top and mighty machinery down below. In the course of its five years of building, Biosphere 2 attracted highly favorable, indeed fascinated, worldwide attention from the media, the scientific community, European, Japanese, and Russian space agencies, as well as from NASA. It became the world's most touted science fiction adventure story, like a science fiction tale whose fiction was for real. Four men and four women are spending their first night in Biosphere 2. In 1991, eight researchers were sealed inside a futuristic glass complex near Oracle, Arizona, to spend two years living in a self-sustaining habitat. We hope by building Biosphere 2 that we build the first prototype for a total life system that you'd be able to take to another planet. Tonight we put a fascinating look into our future. The developers hailed the experiment as a prototype for colonizing space, and it became a media sensation. News cameras captured the theatrics as eight men and women were about to be closed inside Biosphere 2 in the fall of 1991. They vowed they would grow all the food they needed, recycle their water, air, and waste, and live without supplies from outside. I take my last breaths of this atmosphere knowing that I will take breaths from a different atmosphere from all of you for two years. It had taken four years to build a three-acre, nine-story-high complex in the Arizona desert. The goal was for Biosphere 2 to support its inhabitants without help from the outside world. They would grow enough food on their half-acre farm, while the five wilderness areas would naturally recycle their air and water. Scientists from respected institutions, like the Smithsonian and the University of Arizona, signed on as paid consultants and helped the project gain credibility. Secretary of Commerce Robert Mossbacher visited the site. He called it a noble experiment. But the biggest payoff from Biosphere 2 could be a better understanding of our world and of how we might someday live on other worlds. While their home video shows them feasting, the truth is the Biospherians have had trouble growing enough food to sustain themselves. Tabor McCallum has lost 54 pounds, though he says he's okay. You know, I really do like my new weight much more. Plant die-offs and reduced growth caused by unusually cloudy conditions outside of the dome meant a limited diet, including the rationing of coffee to a single cup per person every two weeks. 
Living on two-thirds of their normal calorie intake with few proteins, the Biospherians experienced significant weight loss, as well as wildly fluctuating carbon dioxide and oxygen levels that left them gasping for air as though they were at an altitude of 13,000 feet. The oxygen loss was particularly problematic as support for the project among the public was damaged by the revelation that oxygen was being introduced into the system from outside, negating the concept of Biosphere 2 as being entirely self-contained. By the end of the two-year mission, the Biospherians, in the words of Jane Pointer, had suffocated, starved, and gone mad. The group split into factions, disagreed over scientific goals, and barely spoke to one another. Biosphere 2 failed as a human habitat, and the Biospherians are long gone, but 20 years later, the building is still standing. Today, it is owned by the University of Arizona, and with continuing financial support from Ed Bass, the university has found new ways to utilize the facility for scientific research.